Hello and welcome to video one of week five. In this week, we're gonna solve some dimension problems. Dimension problems are some of the most important problems in geometry. We've got a lot of indirect descriptions of geometric items in mathematics. And often it's not clear from the description what the dimension of the object is, but that's a very, very important thing to know about it, to know what kind of size it has, roughly speaking. So in this video, we're gonna talk about dimensions of spans. Let me remind you of the definition of rank Rank is the number of leading ones in the reduced row echelon form of a matrix. That's going to be important in what we're doing here. All right, so let's talk about a span. A span is the span of some number of vectors. In order to figure out the dimension of spans, we have a question of redundancy. If all k of these vectors are pointing in fundamentally different directions, I have a span of this direction, this direction, this direction, then I'm going to get something that's dimension k. But the problem is I might have redundancies. I might have some relationship between these vectors that means that one or two or three of them are not fundamentally new directions. I need to figure out this redundancies. How I do this is I take these vectors and put them as rows in a matrix and I row reduce. And then the rank is going to be the dimension of the span. And even more specifically, if I keep track of which rows corresponded to which vectors, either by not exchanging or when I exchange, just keeping track of the exchanges, then each row without a leading one came from a vector which was not linearly independent, which was not needed in the span, a vector that I could have deleted from the span. So say that the second row ended up not having a leading one, that means I could actually get rid of this vector and have exactly the same span. It wasn't contributing to the dimension of the span, it was a redundant vector. So that's the process, put the vectors in as rows, row reduce, look at the rank. Let's do some examples. Here's a span of three vectors in R3. I take these vectors, I put them in as rows, so five negative one zero becomes a row of five negative one zero, two negative two six one becomes a row, three four one becomes a row. It's tempting to put them in as columns because we typically write vectors as columns in this course. We have to sort of flip them, put them in as rows. Uh, we row reduce, I'm not going to do the details of the row reduction algorithm anymore. I'm going to rely on the fact that from previous weeks, hopefully you are comfortable with it. If you're not, come talk to me. But this row reduces to the identity matrix. Each row has a leading one. So each vector in this span was necessary. Each vector pointed in some fundamentally different direction. So this span is three dimensions. And since this is in R3, the only three-dimensional thing in R3 is everything. So this span was, in fact, the whole space has three dimensions. Here's another example in R3. I've got three vectors. I put them in again as rows, so I sort of have to flip them. I row reduce, and in this case, I get a row of zeros. So this tells me that this span only has dimension two. Even though there are three vectors here, one of them is redundant, and assuming this row reduction didn't switch things around, I can conclude this last one was redundant, and I can in fact just get rid of it, and this is the span of only two vectors. These two vectors form a basis for this span. This span is a plane in R3, it has dimension two. And I can do this in as many dimensions as I want, in as much complication as I want. So here's a complicated example. Here are six vectors in R6. So I take these vectors, put them all in as rows of a matrix. I row reduce this matrix, which I asked a computer to do, because I do not want to row reduce a six by six matrix. And the computer told me that this is the row reduced form. There are three leading ones. So in those list of six vectors I started with, in fact, only three were necessary. And if this row reduction was done keeping track of which ones were which, if we didn't exchange rows, then it meant that the fourth, fifth, and sixth vectors in that original description were in fact redundant. I only needed three of them. Dimension three, so it's a three-dimensional space in R6. And that's, that's all we have for dimensions of spans. It's quite easy, you just put things in as rows, count leading ones, the rank of the matrix completely tells you what vectors were non-redundant, what the dimension of your span is. 